I'm Yara Shahidi, I'm 17 years old, and I'm an actress and humanitarian. My name's Adriba, I'm 24 years old, I'm from London. I am a model and the founder of Girls Talk. What makes you feel powerful? I feel like, I mean, it may sound cliche, but confidence or faking confidence until I have a real confidence. Mm -hmm. I've been in so many places where I'm like, okay, there's a professor, there's somebody who has been saving the world their entire life, and here I am. What am I supposed to be doing yeah. in this space? That's where acting comes in handy. I'm like, I'm oh gonna act God, like I know, I'm gonna yeah. act like I know what I'm talking about. And just valuing myself. Whenever anybody asks, like, what is your deepest fear? I feel like mine is always being overvalued and feeling as though somebody thinks too highly of me and at the end of the day I'm not that special or impactful. I know when I see things like activist or this and she's doing this and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm still learning. I don't yes. really know. I I'm, have no idea. I'm still learning about, you know, with mental health, I'm still learning what bipolar means in my body. I'm still learning what all these things are. I have so many friends who like email me after I've done something and they're like, Adra, I hope you took a moment to see what you did. Because with me, I'm like, done that onto the next thing. <laughs> yes. It's never like good enough. Like really... I'm so competitive with myself. I really feel like powers in being like, okay, I'm gonna sit for a moment and be like, how amazing it is that I did that. And that, and that where am I going to take it, but also not letting it go to your head. Yeah, because I mean it goes to your head in two ways. It's not just like, oh, I'm full of myself, but just this idea that you're not good enough. What about fashion? What about clothes? Does that make you feel bad? Definitely. There's putting on a costume and becoming people that mm -hmm. you... I There's love it! Yes! I love it! There's something I, so I get great really about into it. it. <laughs> yeah. But don't you call me do. Adra. Uh, I come from a family of shoe addicts. Oh, I'm um, literally a shoe addict. <laughs> yes. So, oh my god, it's so bad. When I'm in heels, I love the click of a heel because yeah. it's like, look at me taking up space and time, yeah. and look, I'm here. And look you how I walk, me. and it changes your whole like changes your whole posture. What does hope look like for you as a woman of color? I feel like for me, it's seeing the. the the rest of my generation, Generation Z, and then Generation Alpha coming after yeah. them, in which they don't have any of these stereotypes in their head because they have so many more examples and role models exactly. that broke glass ceilings for us. What kind of responsibility do you think you have to invoke knowledge on the, you know, the girls that follow you or the men that follow you. I mean, what I aim to do is just help educate and help mm -hmm. spread knowledge so that people can come to their own conclusions. It's hard to even have a conversation when you've only been taught one way of exactly. doing something. Yeah. Blackish is a socially aware show and it intentionally covers topics that a lot of shows shy away from. Yeah. And that's because we take our platform seriously and to be given the opportunity to have a show on primetime TV featuring a black family, I mean, yeah. that's so rare. So to be able to take that platform and then address police brutality and to address religion and to address all these topics is really important for me and that's why I gravitated towards that kind of show. Yeah. Post-election, I've been going to a couple think tanks, and one thing that has opened my eyes was just how um, these we so so many times we separate these problems, like oh, the problems that the LGBTQ community faces versus problems that immigrants face versus problems that people of color face versus problems that women face versus viewing them as the same thing. Yeah. It really opened my eyes just to feel just the commonality in all of our problems. And so it's not so much as, oh, that's their problem, but it's our problem. Yeah. And when you hear people just talk and it's just how passionately they talk about whatever, it makes you realize that it's like, it's, it's a part of just our responsibility to do as much as we can to create a space in which we can all exist. And we do it in different ways and it's not about trying to tackle everything at once, but realizing just um, how addressing any issue is helping everybody.